Um, I suppose one of the things that's always been clear to us is that alongside our work and that it belonged to with the education partners and the department, a critical area or location where awareness and understanding of the issue uh, of homophobic bullying and support for young LGBT people in schools has been raised consistently is in the Oireachtas. And I'm delighted to see so many members of the Oireachtas here today and I really welcome their support and their continued support over a long time. And I'm really delighted to introduce um, Minister for Education, Rory Quinn, who has been one of those people who consistently raised and addressed these issues over, as Kieran said, let's not do the long, but over quite a while. But certainly, in, um, most clearly in the last Parliament when uh, Sandra and others were working to raise the issue of the guidelines and get achieve that breakthrough, his support was invaluable. So uh, without further ado, Minister Rory Quinn, thank you. Thank you very much, Brian. Uh, could I first of all uh, acknowledge my Parliamentary colleagues, deputies, gotta be, better get this alphabetically correct. Uh, Hannigan, Humphreys, and O'Reardon, and Eric Byrne, who's just come in. Thank you, Eric. And I'd like to extend a special welcome to Senator Averill Power. You're no stranger to this complex of buildings. Uh, for those of you who don't know, that Averill was a very influential advisor with former Minister Hannigan. Um, or not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, and uh, I'd just like to, to, to acknowledge you. I also would like to acknowledge, and it's an indication of how we in the department, uh, if I may speak, use the royal re for people who are permanent and land temporary, uh, Harold Heaslop, the chief inspector of our schools division, a uh, clear indication of, of how the department at departmental, and you've already said, Sandra, uh, the, the good support we've had over the years in relation to this. Ladies and gentlemen, the recent programme for government states we will encourage, and I quote, we will encourage schools to develop anti-bullying policies and in particular strategies to combat homophobic bullying to support students, end of quote. Within that context, I'm very pleased to have been invited by Glenn to, you, to speak to you today to perform the official launch of including lesbian, gay and bisexual students in school policies, guidelines for principals. This new resource represents the culmination of a lot of hard work by all concerned, and I hope that it will, it will prove of practical assistance to those who use it. The guidelines are designed to complement previous guidance resource for school principals and guidance counsellors, and are the result of a collaborative undertaking between Glenn and the National Association of Principals and Deputy Principals, represented very ably here by Clive Byrne, and with the cooperation of the Department of Education and Skills. I would like to specifically mention Sandra Gowan, Director of Education Policy with Glenn and Clive Byrne, Director of the NAPD, for their hard work and commitment in bringing the resource to reality. The development of these guidelines highlights the, necess the necessity for schools, parents and the wider community to tackle bullying, peer aggression and violence directed at young people based on their sexual orientation. In the case of homophobic bullying, young people are targeted either individually or collectively these young people are already part of a minority in society and are often experiencing a complex array of challenges in their young lives. These young people may already be experiencing isolation, fear, marginalization, and lack of acceptance from their peers and others as a result of their own sexuality. And that's on top of becoming a teenager or grown up as well. So it's a, it's a pretty heavy load for people to bear. It is therefore particularly important that we equip our principals and school leaders to be able to deal with the many challenges surrounding the inclusion of lesbian, gay and bisexual students in our schools. The need to tackle homophobic bullying is welcome and I'm welcome in, the, in welcoming these guidelines. I also want to take this opportunity to identify some of the steps that have been and will be taken in the coming years to help combat homophobic bullying in our schools. The newly appointed senator, Catherine Zappone, once wrote about her teenage years, and I quote, I don't think anyone would have noticed my veiled confusion. I loved sport, speech, music, and everything to do with school. I stood out. I was a leader. But I didn't talk about everything. Not even to my best friend. Not even to myself. Our teenage years are troubling, difficult years for all of us. That quote describes the added confusion and isolation which young LGBT people must endure. Adding homophobic bullying to this mix creates devastating consequences. Some of the research which has been carried out in this area helps underline the urgency of making progress in this area. 
DCU research has found that 80% of teachers were aware of homophobic bullying in their schools. Research commissioned by Glenn and Belong to Youth Services has found that 50% of LGBT young people have experienced verbal homophobic bullying, but over a third have heard homophobic comments from their teachers, from their teachers. And amongst worrying of all, the same research has found that half of, the, of our LGBT, um, LGBT young people have seriously thought of ending their lives. I mean, that, that just is, to me, scary. Uh, and I think we have to, to really digest and absorb the findings of this scientific research. There is a direct correlation between homophobic bullying, mental health difficulties, and su suicidal behavior amongst LGBT young people. That is the fact that we must hold forefront in our minds as we embark on this discussion. In 1993, the Department of Education issued guidelines on countering bullying behavior as an aid to schools in devising measures to prevent and deal with instances of bullying behavior. Those guidelines were drawn up following consultation with representatives of school management, teachers and parents and are sufficiently flexible to allow each school authority to adapt them to suit <coughs> the particular needs of their school. I will be asking my department to re-examine these guidelines to ensure currency of content. For instance, they should reflect issues such as homophobic bullying, cyberbullying, and even text bullying. Under the Education Welfare Act of 2000, all schools are required to have in place a code of behaviour, and this code must be drawn up in accordance with the guidelines of the National Education Welfare Board. The NEWB guidelines were issued to schools in 2008. As a result, every school must have, a place in, have in place a policy which ex includes specific measures to deal with bullying behaviour and within the framework of the school's overall code of behaviour. Similarly, similarly to the guidelines issued by my department, it is important that the NEWB also ensure the content of their guidelines, that that content is kept current and explicitly refer to areas such as homophobic bullying. <coughs> the NEBW is, the NEWB I should say, is in the process of being transferred to the new Department of Children and Youth Affairs and I will be emphasising to Minister Fitzgerald my views on the need to update these guidelines. I would hope that the NEWB will continue to play a positive role in education and from within the department. The SPHE Support Services has worked with Belong to belong to on the design of a training day for teachers on sexual orientation and homophobia. More recently, the SPHE Support Service initiated a collaborative project with Belong to and Glen to develop a teaching resource consisting of a DVD and lesson materials on the experience of growing up as a young lesbian, gay, bisexual or transgender young person. It would be ready in early 2012 and will be accompanied by a program of teacher training. Guidelines, codes of conduct, modern curricula and training for principals, school leaders and teachers will continue to play an important role in our approach to combating homophobic bullying, but we can and we must do more. One proposal which I'm currently considering is the establishment of a working group comprising all the relevant sections of my department along with the NGOs involved in this area and the education partners including the management bodies and the unions to help draft a roadmap towards the elimination, the elimination of homophobic bullying from our schools. We should make it just totally unacceptable in terms of standard social behaviour that any kind of tolerance is simply not enough. It, we simply have to just get it out of the system altogether and be quite intolerant in, 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 in our detestation of it. In addition, I would also like to mention the very important work being done for young people in schools by Belong to Youth Services. I would like to pay tribute to them for the vital contribution that they make to the lives of young LGBT people. Their most recent campaign, Stand Up, and we've heard reference to this already, Stand Up provides a focus for promoting positive awareness of LGBT young people, tackling homophobia and homophobic bullying, and building allies among young people and teachers. Finally, turning to the role of government, the recently agreed programme for national government includes some commitments which I think are particularly relevant to this area. This government has committed 
to holding a referendum on children's rights, and we will do so as, as soon as practically possible. For anyone concerned with bullying or the rights of children, this is the key first step to adequately protecting our children. Once this has been achieved, a range of options will become available to us, including the investigation of the use of statutory or legislative provisions to work towards removing the threat of bullying from all of our children. Other provisions, such as the commitment to enact gender recognition legislation and our proposal to refer the introduction of same-sex marriage to a constitutional convention, will be of interest to anyone involved in campaigning for LGBT rights. The Programme for Government also states that LGBT people should not be deterred from training or taking up employment as teachers in the state. Visibility of LGBT adults is essential to building accepting environments within which LGBT young people can come to terms with their own personal identities. Progressing these areas would engender a new atmosphere of tolerance and acceptance in our society, something which Kieran referred to and which has an international dimension to it as well. For too long, gay people were criminalised in Ireland. Criminalised, it's hard to comprehend it now, but that was the case. For too long, their relationships received no recognition from the state. And for too long, we have allowed homophobic bullying to be a feature of our education system. Young gay men and women must be allowed to come to terms with their own identities and sexualities without fear or hostility or even violence. We should support all of our young people to be at ease with themselves and with others, regardless of difference. Bullying of all forms, and targeted bullying in particular of young LGBT people in particular, should receive no welcome in our schools and our societies. And I'm greatly heartened by what I heard Clive Byrne say when he addressed us. Let me conclude, therefore. As I have said above, we can and must do more in this area. I would like to confirm the continuing support of the Department of Education and Skills to this important agenda, and I look forward to continued collaboration with Glenn and the other education partners in this area. Thank you all very much. Indeed. Just to conclude by saying, um, Minister, to thank you very much. They were very, it's very heartening actually to hear that the Minister of Education say those things, say those things to young LGBT people who hear the message that it will not be tolerated anymore, um, that tolerance isn't enough, that elimination of homophobic bullying is what is going to happen and is required. And, and I, I, mean, I don't want to speak for all the gays in the world, but I, I certainly would delight it to say that I, I know that will give great hope to very many people, and I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. And, and I suppose the, uh, you, your suggestion of a working group is one that I think we would very strongly welcome. and. and uh, along with belong to uh, and ourselves and other NGOs would be delighted to work with to look forward developing a roadmap towards as you put it the elimination of homophobic bullying but just to finish on that minister to say thank you very much uh, it's been incredibly heartening and you've charted a roadmap for progress that I think we're thrilled with and delighted with and we look forward to working with you and the department over the next very short space of time to as you say eliminate homophobic bullying thank you very much minister.